Hey everybody, I'm Tracy Hamlin and I'm so excited to share that I'm gonna be coming your way every Monday night for an entire hour to spotlight some phenomenal unsigned artists from around the globe, as well as some amazing small businesses from my area that you need to know about. I'm also gonna throw in a song or two. Yay! yay something like that, a little something like that. Now, I'm gonna need you guys to tell all your friends, your cousins, your aunties, your bosses, come on in here and join us. We're gonna have so much fun. You don't want to miss this. I'll see you soon. Ooches of smooching. Tracy Hamlet Show. For me to love you If you won't let me It ain't no way For me to give you all you need If you won't let me give all of me I know that a woman's duty is to help and love that thing, and that's the way it was planned. Oh, but how can I? I am Tracy Hamlin, an international recording artist and owner of the Sweet Jazz Concert Series. I'm so happy to announce that Sunday, May 1st, we will have the next Sweet Jazz Concert. It will be at River Creek Club in Leesburg, Virginia in Loudoun County. So for more information, feel free to go to Sweet Jazz Concerts 
jazzconcerts.com. The Sweet Jazz Concerts, we use music as a catalyst to give back to the community. And for on May 1st, we'll be giving away scholarships as well as a large donation to a local charity. So I'm super, super excited. My short song today was in honor of the Queen of Soul, Miss Aretha Franklin. And it's also for the kickoff of Women's History Month. I actually recorded that version on my third CD called This Is Your Life. So go check it out. We are so excited to be a platform for quality talent and fabulous small businesses that you need to know about. On today's show, I am delighted to have keyboardist extraordinaire and composer Maduka, but first we're going to kick things off with an amazing small business owner who, after just two years in business, is enjoying success, and he just happens to be my nephew. So please welcome to the show, Larry Heyman. What's up, Larry? Hey, Tracy. How you doing? How are you? Thank you. good. I'm good. Thank you so much for being here with us today. So I'm loving all of your I-9 garb back there. So tell us, what is the I-9 Sports franchise? So I-9 Sports is a nationwide um, sports franchise that um, offers a variety of sports to kids ages 3 up to 14. Um, we offer flag football, soccer, baseball, basketball, volleyball. Um, we do after school programs. Uh, we just got our hands in everything sports related. Um, and the, main, the main purpose of I-9 is to um, put the fun back in sports. You know, um, our goal is to have kids um, making friends, learning the sport, um, and overall just having fun. Um, so, um, our goal is always, we have a, our motto is helping kids to see in life through sports. So that's what and we I'm, set out. I have absolutely been witness to that. Just watching, you know, being at some of the practices and watching these kids just flourish from the first time that I came to the second and third time. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm so excited that you're doing this thrilled that you're having success and so proud of you. What was your inspiration for wanting to be a part of this franchise? Well, um, anyone who knows me know that I love sports. You know, mm -hmm. um, ever since I was a kid, I just, I've always just loved everything about sports. And um, uh, my nephew actually played um, in I-9 for another uh, franchise. And um, I went to a couple of his games and um, that kind of sparked my interest, you know, just looking around, seeing how things were going, seeing um, all the kids having fun, seeing how organized things was. And um, I knew that that was something that I could do and that I should do. So um, that's, that's what sparked my interest. Nice. So what was your profession before you became a franchise owner? So I actually was in the army. Um, and um, after a few years, after I was, um, after I got out the army, I worked on a few different government contracts um, in the uh, IT field. And um, actually, I eventually got a job actually with the government um, doing mm -hmm. IT work. Um, so I did that for a long time, actually. Um, and it was a pretty good career, um, mm -hmm. you know, but I think I hit a point in my life where I really wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something I was passionate about. And um, I decided, uh, like I said, after going to my nephew's I Not Sports game, um, I decided to get some information on it. And um, after meeting some other business owners within I Not Sports um, and hearing about their successes, I decided to take a leap of faith and go for it. Ah, oh, I love that. Well, we're going to take a short break and we're going to come right back so you can elaborate on that a little bit more and talk more about your military experience and how it shaped you to becoming a small business owner. So we're going to be right back with Larry Heyman from I-9 Sports Program on the Tracy Hamlin Show. We'll be right back. So 
I'm Charles Meriday, and I'm in the restaurant business. In my 20 years as a chef and restaurant owner, I've been able to work and eat in some of the great kitchens around the globe. There's a whole side of the restaurant that most people will never get to see. So now, I want to take you to the back of the house, into kitchens of some of the best chefs in the world. Along the way, I'll share some of my own tips and recipes so you can cook like a pro too. So join me in the back of the house for a whole new perspective on cooking and food. Serve it, please. Bonavista. I'm glad that you came, but please. I used to watch BET, MTV, VH1. Now I watch Tempo, Soca, Calypso, Reggae, Dancehall. Don't stall, better get tuned in to the Tempo. Don't have cable, they got an app. Go to your app store, download that. Whether it's tourism, cuisine, or the social scenes, if it ain't Tempo, it's a wrap. Who got the Caribbean views? Tempo. It's the latest in Caribbean news. Tempo. You trying to cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Who got the Caribbean views? Tempo. It's the latest in Caribbean news. Tempo. You trying to cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Style takes too long. I can't fit anything. I have nothing in this closet. Oh, I'll just stay home. I need to purge my closet. Oh, but not that dress. Yo, Taylor here. If you ever thought to say one of these phrases, then this show is for you. Join me at the Style Table, where we'll have candid and fun conversations about real women's style issues and wardrobe dilemmas. We will discuss solutions and ideas that will give you a big sigh of relief. You'll learn ways to save money, make money, and enrich the lives of others with the clothes in your closet. We're going to take the stress out of your style. in Montgomery County, Prince George's County, and Anne Arundel County here in Maryland. We offer a variety of sports, including flag football, basketball, soccer, and t-ball for kids ages three to 14. At I9 Sports, our motto is helping kids to succeed in life through sports. For more information, feel free to email me at larry.hayman at i9sports.com. Oh 
Tracy Hamlin Show. We are chatting it up with Larry Heyman, owner of I-9 Sports. And we left off talking about your military experience. First of all, thank you so much for serving. Now, my question is, what aspects of your military career prepared you to become a business owner? Um, I actually would say uh, one thing that being in the military and being a business owner have in common in regards to me, I would say is when I decided, I went into the army when I was 18. And that mm -hmm. was actually the first time in my life where I actually took a leap of faith and um, did something that I was completely unfamiliar with. Like I didn't know anything about the army, air force, Marines, other than what you see in on TV. So, but I knew that I wanted to do something in my life to, you know, work towards my future. So um, I would say me jumping out there as a business owner was literally the same type of um, thing. Um, I knew nothing about business um, at all. But yeah, I tell people that all the time. Yeah. You, I mean, and, you know, we've had conversations about how there are major corporations and organizations that shall remain nameless, but just being with them behind the scenes, you would think they have all the answers, they got it right, and they're figuring it out just like we are. So stepping out on faith is just such a, an important piece of becoming an entrepreneur, um, so well, becoming an entrepreneur and a small business owner. But I'm sorry, go exactly. ahead. No, exactly. No, you're 100% right. And, um, and after t speaking with other people that I knew who um, own small businesses, um, I think that's one of the things that I realized that we had a lot more in common than I thought. You know, you just assume that anybody who's running a successful business got all these degrees and all this experience and all this startup money. And um, they really don't. What they do have is passion for what they're doing. And um, and that's really where it starts, because everything else will mm -hmm. feed off of that passion, um, that passion and that level of focus. Um, so I would say in regards to my military career, to um, my uh, me becoming a franchise business owner, um, that's what I would say was the biggest um, thing that I took from that part of my life. I love that. So how long did it take for you to go from deciding to start your business to actually launching it? Uh, uh, honestly, not long at all. Um uh, like I said, I went to my nephew's game, um, a couple games actually, and I just really thought I could, I envisioned myself doing that. And um, quite frankly, I actually thought I could do a real good job. Um, everybody who knows me always used to tell me, oh, you should coach, you should do this, you should, should do that in regards to, you know, sports and kids. And um, I felt like I got to a point in my life where it was time, so I reached out to um, the I I Sports corporate office um, to find out information on how to become a franchise business owner. And after a few meetings, um, I took that leap of faith and went for it. It became a point where I had no more excuses not to do it. Right. You know, we try to talk ourselves out of doing things all the time, say, oh, I don't have time. I don't have money. I don't have experience. Um, I ran out of excuses and at, it became a point where I would have really regretted not taking that leap of faith. So, yeah. I'm and it forward. makes a difference when it's a, a part of your passion, you know, when you're passionate about it, that's, you know, that makes a big difference too. So you launched in the midst of the pandemic. What <sighs> many challenges did you encounter? <laughs> well, <laughs> so courageous. So, yeah, it's, it's funny because so I actually officially became um, um, an owner and started to run my first program, which was a basketball program um, in January of 2020, you know, right before the pandemic, you know, uh, happier times. And, um, you know, things went real well. Um, we built up a lot of momentum um, and we actually when I say we, I mean me and my staff, my support system, we wanted to carry that momentum to the spring season mm -hmm. and then COVID hit um March, and 20. March 20 yeah um and it it was it was a crazy time because you know I was still trying to learn 
the business and how to be better at, you know, uh, uh, what I was doing and, um, you know, capitalize on everything that I had learned previously and things shut down. But um, the silver lining, if there is a silver lining to COVID, and I use that word loosely, um, it actually gave me and my team more time to really build our foundation and um, really fix little problems that we thought we may have occurred um, um, that may have happened during the first season and mm -hmm. um, really kind of uh, grow from there. So by the time we was able to actually, things started opening up a little bit. Um, we got to start on a smaller scale, just a few kids. Um, and I think that time was actually really valuable for us. Yeah, and it seems like it's just really grown quickly. So I'm sure you're thrilled about that. <laughs> Look at that smile. So yeah, um, it's uh, things have been going well. Um, uh, I'm always working, like always. Sometimes I don't know how to turn it off, um, but, but yeah. that's what happens as a business owner. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you, you, you want it to be good. You want it to be right, and you yeah. know so. I know for everything I do, my brain is is always racing. So always. was pandemic one of your biggest challenge, one of your biggest challenges as a small business owner, or have you um, encountered other challenges? Oh, I definitely encountered other challenges. Uh, you know, that's not going to stop. You know, I don't expect it to. But um, the pandemic was definitely a huge one, which I can imagine it, it was and is for a lot of businesses, a lot of people in general. But um, I would say my second biggest challenge uh, was actually a personal one. Um, I would, and I think most small businesses can relate to this. Um, as an owner, you wear a lot of different hats. You know, mm -hmm. um, you have to be your own. Like you, people always say, "Oh, you're your own boss." No, yeah, you're your own boss. <laughs> Meaning, <laughs> you have to make sure you're up. You're, you're, you're getting out of bed. You're not just lounging around. You're working. You're doing marketing. You're hiring people. You're speaking to customers. You're fixing problems. You have to be your biggest fan and um, your number one supporter Absolutely. because, yeah, if, if you have a dream and a vision, if you don't believe in it and push for it, then nobody else is going to either. It's true. And, you know, in the midst of wearing all those hats, it's extremely important for you to make sure you take that me time, you know, so that you can stay healthy emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. Yeah. So very, very important. So I hope you're taking the time to take care of you. But I know you have Does a one. Count? Who's me time? <laughs> What's that? Does this count as me time? No, does not count as me time, but we're super here, you know, super excited to hear your story. But I know, as I was saying, I know you have a very supportive wife and yes. you know, it's great to have a supportive spouse because you really need that support. So shout out That's, to Amy Heyman. Thank absolutely, you. Absolutely. Absolutely. She's my number one fan, my number one supporter. She's been with me from day one um, in launching this business. And um, she's my confidant. My critic, right. <laughs> she thinks right. she's my boss, but um, we know I, she's the boss. We know she's the boss. So, yeah. one more question for you: um, What um, do you have any kind of nugget of inspiration to share with anyone who is aspiring to start their own business? Yeah, I would say um, I know it's going to sound cliche, and we've all heard it before, but like you really have to take that leap of faith. You have to. Um, believe in what you're doing and um, you got to do it. Like I, um, I wouldn't necessarily tell anybody to just up and leave your job and pursue your passion, but just know that if you keep your job, you now have two jobs right. or you have three. If you, if you already have two jobs, you now have three. Right. Your business has to be a full-time job. You know, if you, if you treat it like a part-time job, you're going to get part-time results. And that's just the reality of it. It's um, yeah, it's uh, it's like having a child or whatever. Like they need to be fed, they need to be rocked to sleep, they need clothes, they need twenty four hour attention, absolutely all the time. If you want to see them grow and be, if you want your business to grow and be what you know it can be. 
Wow. Well, listen, time flies when you're having fun. I tell you, I say this every week. I just want to thank you so much for stopping by to share your journey and your story with us. This was amazing. Follow Larry Heyman at i9sports.com. Is that right? i9sports.com. Yes. And check him out. He's in Prince George's County, Anne Arundel, and Montgomery County. In Maryland. Yep. Thank you so much. Wishing you all the success in the world. Thank you for stopping by. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with keyboard and composer Maduka. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Creeley. I'm a stylist and I've always wanted to do this. It's like in my blood. I go to the grocery store and I literally tell you, I would be the girl that would be in Trader Joe's in an evening wear because that's who I am. So today we are doing a little bit of styling for the fall. I have all the pieces that you need for your, your fall wardrobe. The knits, the button down, the jackets, the boots. I have all of that. You're gonna see a lot of red, a lot of like mustard yellow, a lot of checkered, which is what is on the runway this season. Um, I really believe that I was meant to be in the Victorian era because I absolutely love bows and lace. So everything for me is bows and lace. If it has bows or pockets, I am that girl who would buy it. So you're going to see a lot of that in the pieces that is going to be on Katie today, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. It's the color scheme is for any color, any color skin tone, it'll look fabulous on you. Another one of my favorite because, like, I, you remember I said earlier that I like to look edgy, mm -hmm. sometimes edgy and you sweet. Love edgy. I, I like love edgy, but I want that. I still want to cover all of my aspect, all of my personality. Yes. So edgy and elegant is yes. who I am. time. It has a different meaning in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It goes backwards, forwards, it stops. Welcome back to the Tracy Hamlin Show. Our next guest is a keyboard, a keyboard player and a composer that I actually had the honor and pleasure of recording with a few years ago. Welcome to the show, Maduka. How are you Thank today? You. I'm great. How are you? 
Oh, and Tracy, thank you so much for having me. Oh, it is. I'm so glad that we recently reconnected. Um, I had a gig in Atlanta because I hadn't seen Maduka in several years. Mm -hmm. And I had a gig in Atlanta and she was the keyboard player. So it was great to, to reconnect. So Maduka, tell us, where are you originally from? I'm from Tokyo, Japan. Wow. I, so have you had a chance to go back? Um, well, before the well, pandemic, I should say. Mm -hmm. Yes, before the pandemic, yes, I was mm -hmm. fortunate to go back home and meet my, uh, you know, see my mom and my mm -hmm. uh, family members. Did you perform when you were there? No, I'm not at the time. Uh-huh, you just went to, to visit family. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what led you on the path to becoming a musician? Well, um, actually, when I was in a uh, very young age, Mm -hmm. I was uh, learning this, uh, the, the song, song name is called Still Be Back uh -huh. by Teru Masahino. Mm -hmm. He's a jazz trumpeter. Mm. Yes, he lives in New, New York and Tokyo, you know, Goma Queen Falls, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I learned his song. And at the time, he came to Japan to perform, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. at the concert in mm -hmm. my uh in my town. Okay. So and I I told my parents and then they been uh, they gave me a ticket to go oh, see to him. Go to his concert. No. Yes. So I went there to you know listen to his music, his trumpet and his band. It mm -hmm. was so amazing, mm -hmm. and I was so excited the night. And I couldn't even sleep. <laughs> and so I made a decision right there. I'm going to be a professional musician. So did you also play the trumpet? Do you play any other instruments? Well, I play uh, the organ, piano, keyboards, and a little bit of a saxophone. <laughs> oh, okay. But it was a trumpet player that caught your eye to want to be in the music industry. Yes. So did you ever try the trumpet? since that was what attracted you to uh, Well, not trumpet. I tried the baritone. Baritone? Mm -hmm. That's small, look like a tuba, you know, yes, big I, one. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I've definitely seen that. Okay, that is really interesting. So your style is a combination of classic jazz, soul, funk, salsa, jazz, fusion. Who are some of your musical influences? Well, I have so many, but just name, name of the few. Uh, Joe Sampo, Chick Corea, Harvey Hancock, uh, mm -hmm. uh, David Benoit, uh, Bob James, George oh. Howard, uh, so many. Um, yeah, I noticed that when, when I looked up your um, videos on YouTube, I see that you do a lot of songs by Joe Sample. He he is just amazing and a great person for you to, you know, have been influenced by. Um, I had the opportunity to meet him several times when I was singing with Pieces of a Dream and we wow. were on the shows with him and he was absolutely wonderful. So oh, wow. with, um, with some of the folks that you've named like um, Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea, have you had an opportunity, uh, an opportunity to meet any of the people that have influenced you? Well, what I can say is George Howard, yes, when he was still living. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, he came to Tokyo, Japan mm -hmm. to uh, have a concert in Tokyo. And I was one of the VIP members from Ganaway. Really? And, uh, <laughs> and I was there and I watched his concert and wow, he was so, so amazing and he was talking to me in Japanese. He was talking to you in Japanese? Yeah. Wow. I guess that yeah. was quite surprising to you. Yes. It was very, you know, he, he's very friendly. Mm -hmm. And yes. Yeah, we yeah. had a great so, conversation. 
It's so interesting um, as an artist who's traveled the world and performing in countries with different languages. You know, when I get there, one of the things that I'm always mindful of doing is making sure that I learn a few phrases, mm. um, you know, just so that they can see that I'm trying. Because I want to. It's it's just been amazing to to travel the world and meet people from so many different cultures and to try the food, and but at the same time none of it sticks because I'm there and I'm gone. I'm there and I'm gone. Uh -huh, but uh -huh. That is awesome that he was speaking yeah. Japanese. That was an awesome uh, experience. So how many albums have you released? Album, I have a three albums and five singles out. Five singles. Wow. Uh, five singles, yes. Yeah. Five singles. And um, do you have any new music coming out? Well, the latest one is called "I Feel You," and I'm look, I work, working for working on a few uh, projects right now. Mm -hmm. Well, for your song "I Feel You," congratulations! When that came out in October, your song was one of the most added songs to Billboard. So, yes, thank you so congratulations. much. So, what does that feel like to to release music and to have it on the, the Billboard jazz charts? Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, you know, I did so much, you know, onto the music mm -hmm. time, you know, I spent so much time yeah. you know, working on the music and uh, Prince Project, he, he is the one that uh, uh, co produced mm -hmm. and I produced. And, so, um, so, do you produce most of your music? Uh, well, most of them, but not the last album mm -hmm. not, not, not the last, last album not the last album yeah, okay the other yeah that one by bob bowen oh i know bob this. bowen yeah. awesome so once yeah. you started on billboard did you find that did that help you to get more gigs once your music once your songs were added to billboard because i know oh, i've yeah. heard some artists say that yeah. they don't see um a difference in sales but mm. they start getting called to do more gigs once they try to, you know, once Billboard found uh, their music. Uh, just a few, yes. Mm -hmm. Not not that much, but yes, much. definitely. It, it's good to, you know, be, you know, your name is out there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so. fortunately, that, that song is on the uh, Smooth Jazz Network right now. On the oh, nice. Top so was that your first song on Billboard? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. The first one was, what do you call that? Um, uh, on the Beach. I uh, no, no, Surrender. Mm -hmm. that oh, I love that. I love Surrender. Surrender, yes, oh, yeah. from uh, Illusions of Love album. Nice. I love yeah. that. So we, have, actually, it was more than a few years ago, we collaborated on a song that was Dion Warwick's, but that was by Dion Warwick, Deja Vu. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, we decided to collaborate after we were on a gig together. Was that gig, was that Centennial Park in Atlanta? Is that, was that the gig? What? I, I thought that was Sambuca. They could have been. I just remember we got the gig together and I, I could not remember. So it was probably mm -hmm. Sambuca. So mm -hmm. what was, what made you decide to want to do a Dion Warwick song? Well, when I was in Japan, mm -hmm. I heard a song somewhere. I can't remember exactly where, where it was, but I heard the melody and uh, actually another artist, she was uh, revived that song mm. and she sang so very well. And I remember that song and I mm -hmm. said, I want to do this song in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why it was always in my mind. Oh, okay. Well, your arrangement is yes. absolutely wonderful. And it was, oh, it was so cool to, you know, to come into your studio and work with you. I always learn so much when I collaborate yeah. with, with other artists. And so it was great to come into your space yes, and thank have you so much. in the studio. So that was a lot of fun. Yes. That love was a lot of fun, and thank you so much. And oh. I would love to you know, collaborate again in the future. Oh, absolutely. We must do that. So yes. we're going to take a short break, and we're going to come right back with the amazing Maduka keyboardist and composer extraordinaire, 
Um, and we're going to take a short break. And I think you're going to hear one of her songs. We will be right back. Are you ready? On the train, say, have a joke. Welcome 
welcome back. We're talking to Maduka, keyboardist extraordinaire and composer. Maduka, so you played with uh, the popular group All For One. Their big record yeah. was called I Swear. I remember, I know that a lot of you are familiar with that. What was uh -huh. that experience like? That was a really big group and that's a, that song mm. was still a classic. What was it like working with those with those guys? Wow, well, it was like, uh, I was so amazed. Actually, I was in Hong Kong at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they came to Hong Kong to do, uh, uh, you know, big shows, and I was in the, in, uh, in the group, uh -huh. and then I played with them. Oh, wow. So yeah. did, you, did you go on tour with them, or you played with them while they were in I, with them while, when, they were? when they were in Hong Kong. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. So that was, that's, that's awesome. That song. I mean, people still play that song at, at yeah. weddings, you know, and uh, I know yeah. in corporate bands, I did years of corporate bands and that was a song that oh. we had to play it every time. Oh, so, wow. yeah. so what are some of, you said you were in Hong Kong at the time. What are some of uh, your favorite places that you've performed? Hong Kong, um, most of, most of the time I played at the Hong Kong Coliseum. Mm -hmm. which has about held 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. Oh, 20,000 yeah. people? Yeah, a lot of people. So I was playing there like every day. Oh, my goodness. So yeah. for 20,000 people, are you nervous? What is that like? Well, in the beginning, I was very nervous because so many people, and I couldn't even see each one of them, you know, because mm -hmm. so <laughs> big. And so when you go out to Form, though for something like that do you have any kind of rituals you know do you meditate is there anything in particular that you do before you go perform or do you just uh, go do it well for me I try to um, help hold my energy inside of me so uh -huh. I can explore on stage so I try to you know be quiet as much as I can right. <laughs> No, I, I totally understand. Yeah. It's interesting because years ago, it just didn't matter for me. But now I need mm -hmm. some quiet time. I need to be yeah. alone so that I can, you know, just yeah. clear crazy yeah. energy from my space. So I can go up on stage and give it all that I have. Mm -hmm. So um, exactly. what are some of your most challenging experiences, experiences as oh. uh, being a recording artist? Oh. For, for, for example, um, difficult. Well, you know, um, in life, when we, we are living in life and every mm -hmm. day we face through some different difficult times, you know, maybe mm -hmm. it might be uh, the family member gets sick or passed or uh, something, you uh -huh. know. Wow. You know, sad, you know, news, and uh, I am so, you know, try to be strong, um, you know, and, wow. yeah. So. Yeah, you know, we, we, we work in a world, in an industry where mm. everybody says the show mm -hmm. must go on. Yeah. And because I told my husband, I said, if I'm ever overseas and something happens to somebody in my family, mm -hmm. I don't want really to know until I get back home. Because mm -hmm. I've been on the road with people. I used to sing with Gloria Gaynor from I Will mm -hmm. Survive fame. And I've been on the road with her several times. And people in her mm -hmm. family passed away. And mm -hmm. it's awful mm -hmm. to get that news. And then you have, you know, you have a performance. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't go home right away. And then you have the long, long flights. And it's yeah. just kind of crazy to have to, to deal with yeah. that. So yeah. It's a lot. And I mean, even yeah. Patti LaBelle. Yeah. She's been a couple of times and yes. her, um, her sister passed away. And, oh, you know, oh, that mentality yeah. of the show must go on. So Patty yeah. still performs. So I know, oh. I mean, I can only imagine that that is really, really difficult. Mm. Yeah. Um, so what is, so when you're on the road, yeah. what, what kinds of things do you do on your day off? Because folks, they only see us when we get up on the stage. They don't, right. understand, you know, they don't think about that kind of downtime. Because sometimes you may be off for multiple days <laughs> before your next gig. So what do you do in your downtime? Well, I try to get out there to see the, the town, the city. To uh -huh. see, you know, what, what kind of, uh, you know, 
some interesting stuff or you know I would love to go eat so I go out <laughs> in a dining <laughs> and stuff and walk walking so uh where do you get your inspiration from when you write like I feel for you you wrote that one right oh yes actually I wrote the song because I felt inspired because you know in this um uh, pandemic time, mm -hmm. people uh, get negatively affected by pandemic. So I try, you know, sincerely uh, try to raise people's uh, vibrations, mm -hmm. and I I try, you know, to right. wrote the song. Nice. So when you like, how often do you practice? Because I mean, if you guys have never seen Maduka live, you must experience, it's an experience. How often do you practice? Because you're just phenomenal. And I didn't think that you could get any better than you were. And you're just growing and getting better and better. So how often do you practice? Well, you know, I try to find my time to practice because my day is very busy. You know, if I don't have show, mm -hmm. I got a lot of things you know, personal, <laughs> right. to, you know, keep up myself, you know. Right. Um, yeah, so probably, well, maybe a couple of hours of maximum, you know. A day or like how often? Um, every day, every well, I, I used to practice like 10 hours a day when I was in, at the school. You said 10 hours a day? Uh, yeah, when I was a teenager. Oh my uh, gosh. That is incredible discipline. Ten hours a day. <laughs> so did your fingers hurt or did they cramp up or <laughs> oh I can't even remember. <laughs> I was so young, I don't even I was not even thinking. Yeah, you were just, you know, determined to be yeah. great. And yeah, so yeah. Well, that explains it because you are absolutely phenomenal. Um, how uh, often are you performing now? Well, um, Actually, the concert coming up is called uh, Siga Jazz Affair, a uh, smooth jazz concert in Athens, Georgia. In Athens, Georgia? Yes. And when is that? That is going to be March 20th. March 20th. So is it just yes. your show or is anybody joining you? Is it just your band? Uh, yes, my band. Yes. Oh, nice. And how many people yes. are in your band? That would be four piece. Okay, but sometimes yes. I know I saw that you had something coming up with a singer. How often do you bring on um, singers? Well, it, it's a totally different kind of event uh -huh. that I was going to do, uh, but it was canceled. So oh, okay, right. So now we move to this one to Mark um, so in Georgia. So yeah. anybody in Athens, Georgia, mm. look up Maduka. You guys need to see her perform live. She is absolutely amazing. Maduka, Thank where you. can people keep up with you? What Can you give us yes. your social media links and your yes. website? Uh, please uh, go to my website, maduka, M-A-D-O-C-A, music.com. Madukamusic.com. And what about yes. Instagram, Facebook, yes. LinkedIn? Yes. Instagram is Maduka underscore music. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. Facebook is Maduka music one. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Maduka, she has music on iTunes. She's on Pandora, Spotify, yes. everywhere. Go check out her music. I mean, I get goosebumps it, listening to your music. It's absolutely feel good music. And I just want to thank, thank you, you for taking time out of your bus busy schedule to come and chat with us and share your story with our viewers. Thank you so much. I wish you all the success in the world. Thank Looking you. forward to seeing you soon. Um, I have some things in mind for you. So we'll definitely be yeah. reading. And I'm going to continue enjoying your music and your videos on YouTube. Again, I want, just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you, Larry Heyman from I-9 Sports. And this is Dorothy Marie Hamlin's baby girl, Tracy Hamlin, signing off. Thank you all so much for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Ooches of smooches. Thank you so much. For <laughs>
Hey everybody, I'm Tracy Hamlin and I'm so excited to share that I'm going to be coming your way every Monday night for an entire hour to spotlight some phenomenal unsigned artists from around the globe as well as some amazing small businesses from my area that you need to know about. I'm also going to throw in a song or two. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that, a little something like that. Now, I'm gonna need you guys to tell all your friends, your cousins, your aunties, your bosses, come on in here and join us. We're gonna have so much fun. You don't want to miss this. I'll see you soon. Ooches of smooches. Are you ready? Tracy Hamlet Show. Tracy Hamlet Show.